Welcome to Sabado Session Podcast. My name is Jurent. I have got more and today we have Carola in one of our Sheffield series. Carola, how are you doing? Hello. Come inside the other. Uh, it's moving um, very well. <laughs> Fantastic. Look, um, to be honest with you, it's an honor for me to have you in my podcast because you are one of the greatest female powerlifters of all time. Thank you. And that isn't me saying it. That is just anyone that type your name on the internet, they will see the result. You know, as Mo mentioned there before we started recording, we keep on scrolling to look at where Carol has come fifth. No, the no, lowest. There's, no, there's no third. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That just explained how amazing you are. Uh, let me start this by saying the first question for me to you is last year you saw Sheffield from home. What was your feeling when you were watching Sheffield from home? Come si è sentita? Um, quel giorno mh, probabilmente sono stata più nervosa di quanto in realtà pensavo di, di essere nei giorni precedenti. Alla fine mi sono detto ok, andremo l'anno prossimo, però poi quel giorno lì in particolare ero effettivamente molto nervosa e, e penso sia abbastanza normale perché ci tenevo molto ad esserci. Uh, she ended up being uh, way more uh, nervous than what she thought in the days before uh, up to the competition. Then that day she was a bit nervous. Was it was it was it the nervous because again because as we mentioned in the beginning, Carola has done so many competition, right? Is it the nerves is something just come every time she's competing or is the nerve comes when she knows this is going to be very tough? Dice se ci sta sempre è, è un'ansia uh, che hai quando devi gareggiare sempre o solo quando sai che magari può essere molto difficile? Mm. Uh, principalmente nelle gare più importanti e più difficili sicuramente l'ansia è, è maggiore rispetto a magari alle gare che possono essere nazionali in cui so che comunque c'è meno in gioco. At national competitions, obviously, she's not so nervous. In this case, for example, it will be a bit different and a bit, uh, you know, harder somehow. So she's a bit nervous, but it's kind of normal. Uh, again, well, you mentioned that at the national competition, she mentioned she's not nervous. And this one, because it's Sheffield, right? And she's not going up again alone. She has go Leo. And of course, the big news, which is Agatha will be competing there. Has it has an impact on her training in terms of like the way seeing her training will be? Okay, so how does it impact on the training? The training, the fact that this time you're not alone, there are the other two. I think there is something positive and negative. The aspect of positive is certainly that you know that you have to sai che devi fare eh, il meglio possibile e forse anche di più del meglio. L'aspetto negativo è che comunque c'è quel poco di ansia in più che probabilmente senza, eh, a volte, eh, cioè senza quell'ansia si fanno le cose anche, anche con più tranquillità e a volte meglio. So you have some pros and you have some cons and probably uh, in this case she knows she has to do... Uh, the best she can do and maybe more than the best but when you are not nervous and you have not that kind of you know like anxiety maybe you can perform better somehow so you have pros and cons but in this case sheffield uh, is worth it so I, i have a question right before we start touching to the training and the story about sheffield just one question before I move to more. I know more. I've also got one, one more question. Also. One I'm more question. Just looking at, looking at the history. Yeah. Carola, she's a tremendous equipped lifter, right? Mm. And she's an amazing role. Which is the preference? Does she prefer equipped or role? If so, why? <laughs> okay. Eh, questa è una domanda molto, molto gettonata che ho ricevuto tantissime volte eh, finora. 
E in realtà non ho mai saputo esprimere una preferenza perché sono due uh, divisioni abbastanza diverse tra di loro e, e che ti danno anche uh, degli stimoli diversi. Uh, L'attrezzato probabilmente spesso rispondo che preferisco uh, le preparazioni RAW e, e magari le gare attrezzate se devo scegliere soltanto per una questione di adrenalina. però in realtà non ho una vera preferenza. She's been asked uh, this question so many times and she never knows exactly how to answer. Uh, usually she, she says that the uh, classic or uh, raw uh, preparation up to the competition is somehow uh, better. Instead, the equipped competition is uh, definitely better as it's more, you know, like there's more... adrenaline and you don't know actually what's going to happen so maybe that's a good answer So to give to give an answer for corona is corona preferred road than equipped so <laughs> i've got i've got one i've got two questions then because first of all my question based on the equipped and the uh, raw is does carola do bench only competitions And if not, what is, what is her thoughts on bench only competitions? Se fai solo gare solo di sola banca e quanto, quanto fai? Ok, um, in realtà gare di sola banca soltanto in Italia e perché sono uh, diciamo obbligatorie, altrimenti probabilmente non le farei per una questione di numero di gare. Eh, totali durante l'anno e la stessa cosa per le gare internazionali cioè eh, essendoci tante gare e, e comunque dovendo un po' noi eh, badare a tutte le spese eccetera ci sono delle priorità e per ora le gare di banca non sono in cima alle priorità So uh, she said not really, uh, only in uh, Italy and just because it's like mandatory to have a qualification abroad. Uh, but uh, to answer your question, she has not a huge PR in a bench only competition. It's like uh, che era 175, equipped. 175 uh, equipped and maybe, I don't know. The same uh, 140. 45, 44. Yeah, 145, 144 in the classic. So nothing, nothing amazing, more than amazing. <laughs> uh, let me, let me, let me just. Jurens, 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 what's your bench again? No, oh, no, no, don't talk about my bench. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let me just clear, clarify this to the listeners, right? This is a woman that is 63 kilogram benching 145 row, one. 45 kilo no pound kilo yeah. and 175 kilo equipped jesus you know what no let me just stop there right because okay. i'm stuck with my bench my best is 180 and that 180 is only this year right so <laughs> i know how 175 feel and 145 i know how you feel that's ridiculous anyway um, my second question though was looking at your history back in 20 So I wanted to confirm if your first competition was in 2015, because in that competition, you benched more than you squatted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's very unique. So I want yeah. to know why that happened, if there was a story behind it or... Yeah. Eh, semplicemente perché la, la panca eh, già mi allenavo da diversi anni, da 3-4 anni, mentre squat e stacco avevo iniziato ad allenarli da molto poco, uno o due mesi, quindi eh, semplicemente che ero già molto più avanti in, di panca e chiaramente poi essendo la mia specialità era anche molto alta. She was like 2-3 uh, months into squat and deadlift, but like three four years uh into bench pressing and that was already you know like her bread and butter we, we, we cannot see you anymore. we cannot see you oh oh can you see us can you hear us here yes yeah. oh i think maybe it might just be an internet thing i think maybe just carry on carry on um, I, i can hear you and i can see you Yeah, we can see you. Uh, just a moment. No problem, no problem at all.
So while we fix the glitch, Mo, one seventy five. Okay. okay. Oh, we're okay. back on. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. So uh, it was like her specialty, uh, even at the time, that was uh, clear since the beginning. Wow, I mean, that's amazing. You know, I I know I, I want to move on from this bench conversation and talk about other things, but I can't help you to ask one more question. All right. So when you, Carola, when you go to the gym, you are benching and you're benching more than men's, right? Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Eh, in, in realtà ci ho messo un po' a capire eh, il fatto che comunque fossi abbastanza forte sulla banca perché quando inizi non hai, soprattutto in quegli anni non, qui in Italia non c'erano tante persone che, che facevano questo sport quindi io vedevo gli altri ragazzi che si allenavano, donne non ce n'erano e dico vabbè dai falleniamoci un po' poi piano piano negli anni mi sono accorta che, che, che effettivamente ero un po', un po' più in là di chili, un po' più alti rispetto a, alla media e però l'ho sempre vissuta molto normale soltanto un piccolo aneddoto che nei primi anni sognavo facevo degli incubi in cui sognavo di svegliarmi molto più debole così all'improvviso come se fosse una sorta di miracolo um, she said that at the beginning she didn't quite well uh, figure out that she was good because at that time there was no so many people uh, you know benching or doing powerlifting uh, but then at some point she she realized that she was pretty good <laughs> uh, but one funny thing is that she used to um, have a nightmare in which she wasn't able to you know like bench anymore or she had not <laughs> any kind of special strength anymore <laughs> and she was uh, terrified <laughs> I mean, sorry, Francesco, because you came here. I need to ask you this. Can you bench? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, I can bench, yeah. You can bench more than Carola, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been, it's been a, a tough time, but... <laughs> I had to oh, ask that. Because that's amazing. He does to, uh, 280 uh, in a keep -it. Wow. wow, okay. Yeah, that's a different level. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good, that's good. Let's not talk about bench anymore. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't... If my missus was benching 145, mm -hmm. once I'm equipped, yeah, we'll have a very good conversation. But, <laughs> and, I mean, again, um, Carola, let me bring you back to Sheffield. So, the World Championship in Malta, and you did that World Championship almost, to me, where I was sitting, it came almost like you was an emission. Was he the fact that what happened at the Arnold's? Because I met you at the Arnold's, we spoke about it when you had your injury at the Arnold's. And then you came to the World Championship, you smashed it, right? So after the Arnold, did you just focus on that World Championship or it was just a, like any other pro, uh, prep? Hai capito? E dice se dopo l'Arnold. Lui dice: T'ha visto a Malta e poi dice ripensando anche al fatto che ti eri fatta male all'Arnold, ti ha chiesto se. Eh, avevi proprio quell'obiettivo fisso in testa mm -hmm. per il mondiale a Malta oppure è stata una gara preparata come un'altra gara, no? Ok, eh, sì, diciamo che dopo l'infortunio dell'Arnold mi aspettavo anche che la convocazione a Sheffield non, non arrivasse e diciamo che l'obiettivo dell'Arnold era principalmente quello, essendo stata fuori dal mondiale e dopodiché avendo un po' realizzato che appunto la convocazione non sarebbe arrivata eh, l'obiettivo primario era eh, vincere il mondiale e prendere la, la, la qualificazione a Sheffield e sapevo che potevo anche fare il record di, di totale che le cose sarebbero potute coincidere quindi sicuramente la preparazione è stata molto molto voluta e intensa anche per essere il primo rientro in gara uh, classic dopo tanti anni però credo di averla affrontata come tutte le altre preparazioni con lo stesso impegno uh, She said that back at the Arnolds uh, the, the main goal was to uh, try and get the quali eventual qualification for Sheffield as she didn't do the, the world championship that year. So she just tried and, you know, you know how the, 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 the story uh, was, yeah. um, um, about Malta, uh, the idea was to 
win the world championship. She knew she could do the the world record total, mm -hmm. uh, but it was like a normal international competition, nothing too special. She had that goal, but that was not nothing like Sheffield for sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So, Jurens, Jurens, let me oh. let me let me come in here, right? I like how you said it. You said that IPF motor prep was just international. It was just general training. And it's nothing like Sheffield, the prep so far for Sheffield intensity. I'm looking at the training and I've seen 140. You posted, this was last year, right? Corolla has probably made advances already. She posted 140 for three reps and bench, right? Mm -hmm. So can you give us a little bit as to how this prep, what's different this prep? How have you, what are your goals? What have you changed in training that is making this prep a special one? che cosa rende questa preparazione diciamo che sicuramente quello che cambia è che qui le aspettative sono più alte probabilmente tra il cambio categoria e il fatto di di sapere che la competizione è tanto tanto alta sia all'interno della mia categoria sia con tutte le altre con tutte le altre avversarie ti spinge in un certo senso a, a voler fare di più quindi eh, quello che quello che cambia è proprio ehm, l'intensità degli allenamenti cioè quanto ehm, ti spingi oltre probabilmente anche le aspettative che hai in testa quindi proprio mh, basarsi su delle aspettative un po più alte she said that basically you have a lot higher uh, expectations you know you know you have uh, uh, really good opponents and you have to give that kind of intensity to your preparation and and basically i can tell <laughs> i see it it's <laughs> kind of different <laughs> yeah the, the change in the the weight class also is something which can bring something more, mm -hmm. as you may imagine. I think, right, I mean, that's a very good segue that you touch on the changing weight class. When Carola did the in Malta, when she did the 63 um, class, did she know that she would be going to 69 anyway? Or is it something she knew like, okay, I'm going to do 63, if I go to Sheffield, I can do 63 or 69. Or you guys knew already that she would be moving up to the 69. Sì, ehm, allora in quel momento in realtà non era sicuro la 63 sicuramente eh, nel, nell'ultimo anno era una categoria che mi stava molto stretta ho fatto fatica più fatica del solito a rientrare nel peso per cui eh, questo sicuramente è stato uno degli aspetti che ci ha spinto poi a scegliere di andare in 69 però sicuramente eh, il tutto si è anche basato eh, sul regolamento di Sheffield e sul, eh, eh, appunto su, sul, sul record di totale e essendo poi che la 69 il record in 69 è rimasto più basso che in 63 eh, anche dopo il mondiale perché eh, via non l'ha alzato così tanto e a quel punto non aveva proprio quasi alcun senso uh, rimanere in 63 quindi fino a quel momento in realtà non era deciso ci abbiamo pensato un pochino nei, nelle settimane a venire e poi è stato abbastanza automatico ok it was not uh, we, we, we didn't know that in that moment we knew that we could do something in that you know like direction uh but when we saw that the 63 was a little bit like on the top end of her potential for that moment and we saw the the potential of being a 69 uh as the the world record was lower so you can not... be honest just say the world record is weak can... <laughs> <laughs> oh wow <laughs> hi hello that's indy hi. welcome in he was just logging in so welcome indy we're in the middle of the world record here you spoke about the world record the 69 was lower and i put the right context to utilize it to use it is weaker than the 63 right <laughs> so now Carola is going to the 69th, right? I know mm. the boys have got a lot of questions. My question is, but how much is she looking to break this world record at 69? Because it's lower than 63. 
di quanto dice Eh, sì, quanto lo voglio portare su. eh, sì diciamo l'obiettivo è di alzarlo di un po' di un bel cioè di un po' di quello sicuramente non di pochi chili eh, poi si sa che le gare eh, hanno sempre il loro percorso in questo caso siamo poi in tre a giocarci questo record quindi sicuramente non è come fare la gara da sola in cui decidi un po' a tavolino quello che devi fare eh, l'obiettivo sicuramente è, è di fare più o meno intorno tra i 580 e i 590 sì <ride> Not a few kilos, uh, but a lot. That's Yeah, what you I, said. yeah I, had I had 40 there, 40 or 45. No, I don't speak Italian. I had 40 there, right? I don't know. She, she said, at the end, she said like 580, 590, something around that numbers. But uh, you never know what happens at, you know, like in competition, you have to, you have to call what's needed to do what you have to do. um not a lot of drama to be honest you know going up to 69 was the most uh, smart decision we could do and we just did it we'll we will try and do that Jesus. that's safe I'm I'm scared. I got goosebumps. You know, you know, my boys. You can chime in if you want. Don't just wait for me to ask all the questions because I got so many questions. See, the, the problem, the problem here is I'm trying to do the calculations. I'm trying to add the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> oh I'm God, trying here we to. go. I don't, I don't know. So, <laughs> and I don't want to overstep because Carola is a legend. One thing as an athlete, especially someone that has such a high level, I feel like if you say you bench one fifty, one fifty five, they feel like they do one sixty on the day. You know. Mm. So <laughs> exactly. So Carilla, could you or actually could you give us a rough idea as to which numbers you're looking to push? Because we've seen your Italian your Italian competition. It looked like a day in the park. It looked like you woke up, you lifted, and you went home. You know, it was perfect. Everything was easy. So what are we expecting numbers wise? If you don't mind sharing for squat, bench, deadlift. Se non ti dispiace, Okay. ti dispiace. Um... Beh, mi dirò più o meno. Okay. Sicuramente eh, l'obiettivo eh, è chiaro che eh, provare a fare il record di squat e di panca e di totale che sono quelli alla mia portata, sta con neanche ci penso chiaramente. E, eh, diciamo che non voglio dare numeri troppo precisi, eh, sia perché un, un po' per scaramanzia in realtà e un po' perché fa parte del gioco, quindi diciamo ecco che l'obiettivo sicuramente è alzare di un po' il record di squat e panca. Um... <laughs> I know, I know you, you, you're thinking, you're, mm, can we say this one? Can we not say this one? No, no. <laughs> you will have, I guess, I guess you will have like Italian. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, I've got them already. <laughs> okay. The, the answer was, the answer was um, raising a bit the world record squad. raising a bit the world record bench and total. Uh, she, she is not saying anything more as this is part of the game, but not by a few kilos. That's the answer. <laughs> so basically what Carola said, that if I can translate to our listeners, what Carola said, any 69 is coming to Sheffield, come for your SPD package and go home. So, <laughs> I so, like that though. I like that it's there's there's honesty there. Like as as funny as it sounds, we've we've spoken to a lot of people. We've asked a lot of questions, and the numbers being thrown sometimes makes me like, mm, do you know what I mean? Whereas the numbers you're giving are very, they're not easy numbers, but they're numbers that I know that are like. achievable seeing the training and stuff like that you know um but basically breaking everything <laughs> but the deadlift not the deadlift Not the deadlift. <laughs> not everyone can deadlift like you right i don't even know why no, you... that's the only thing i have okay let me ask about the deadlift. <laughs> by the way indy carola's equipped bench is 175 so yeah that's 7.5 kilo uh, less than you but anyway uh... <laughs> my my i've i've I don't know what to say to that, to be honest, but at least she squats to depth, Jurens. You don't need to say that here. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's... Yeah. 
Um, so, Carola, of course, there's Leah at Sheffield. There is Agatha that just jumped from the 76, so 76 coming down to 69. When you heard the news that Agatha is coming down, what was your impression? Um, allora, in parte, uh, non lo so perché, ma ci avevo pensato, cioè avevo pensato a questa ipotesi che qualcuno... Uh, potesse chiaramente cambiare categoria anche in vista di quello che era successo l'anno precedente con uh, Ivi e... e avevo visto una sua gara in cui mi sembrava pesasse di meno però onestamente dico vabbè è, è una cosa molto rischiosa quindi non l'avevo in realtà così tanto approfondita questa idea e quindi comunque un po' mi ha stupito questa cosa e chiaramente il primo pensiero in realtà è stato Cavolo, adesso abbiamo anche una concorrente per il record di banca che prima non c'era, però poi alla fine credo sia stato anche più stimolante così. Um, she thought about that opportunity or like that, I don't know how to say that, come si dice possibilità, that possibility, probably, yeah, that possibility at the beginning, um, as last year Evie uh, did that. So she thought like someone could do that. Uh, but then when she, she heard the, the news, she was like, oh shit, the world record bench is not safe. <laughs> So we'll have a like an opponent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean I mean again, right? It's it's in okay, on the men's side, we've had people switching. You missed, you missed what Francesco just said there. Right. He just said we heard Agatha was moving down. We knew there was gonna be a battle for the bench record, but that's it. He's just saying there's no battle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you for saying better than me. So I, just... <laughs> I mean, no, that, that was not that was not to underestimate anybody. To be honest, it's just that I'm not an English speaker, so it's fine. It's fine. You know, I'm trying to understand what Carola is saying. Even on, on this on this podcast, these these two in particular are very good at you know turning a small silence into like. You said everybody else's <laughs> shit. Basically, is what what's happening. So don't worry about these two. <laughs> anyway, um, Francesco and and um, and Carola, I, on the men, I was saying like on the men's side, we've seen people swapping world record on the bench press. We've seen that in the past. I think Brett Gibbs and Owen used to do that a lot in terms of one point five and five, uh, well, one kilo and all of that. On the women's side, since I've been doing this sport for seven years. I've never seen women swapping world record on bench press. I've seen squat, I've seen deadlift, but I've never seen bench press, right? Mm. So you and Agatha going to Sheffield as two of the outliers on the bench press alone. So has that almost focused your training in a different way or you're just keeping your training as normal? Now you Do know you that it's coming. Are you not focusing you on a little bit more? Do you mean like technically or? Yeah, I'm talking about, basically I'm talking about, okay, now she will have another opener that that basically a competitor that bench as much as her. Is this something now I need to, because in the past, Carola doesn't need to focus on the bench. Her open alone, it leaves everybody in bloody Africa. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> is it now the focus on bench more or just normal? Business as so usual. You mean, so, so you mean the the meat handling? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about meat handling. Even even the preparation to chef. It. Is she yeah, okay. focusing on the bench press more? Vuole sapere come cambierà l'approccio alla banca sia in preparazione che in gara in virtù del fatto che c'hai un avversario con questa lì. Ok, uh, in preparazione diciamo che in realtà le cose si sono svolte normalmente. Eh, io credo sempre che. Eh, cerco di fare il massimo di quello che posso cioè se prima eh, avessi potuto fare di più l'avrei fatto quindi probabilmente sì lo stimolo un po' è, è chiaro che cresce però a livello proprio di preparazione si è svolta normalmente per quanto riguarda la gestione della gara eh, invece penso che sarà un po' diversa eh, perché chiaramente poi lì serve chiamare quello che è necessario 
eh, essendoci appunto un'altra persona che proverà a, a, a fare anche lei il record invece se fossi stata da sola probabilmente avremmo deciso un numero eh, certo da poter fare il più alto possibile ma certo She said that, to be honest, the preparation was kind of normal. You know, she always tries to do uh, the, the, the the maximum she can do, all she can do. Uh, so if she could do more in the past, she would have done that or tried to do that somehow. Uh, what's different is for sure the, the, the meat handling. So you have to... Uh, you have to know what's the the right opener and in this case it's pretty in my opinion it's pretty interesting uh, but let me tell you there are no there are not so many different numbers to choose Francesco, you're a really good politician and now I understand why people say Italian <laughs> politics it's because you're keeping all your cards on your chest. So, my friend, congrats on that. Um, no. <laughs> now, let me translate what Francesco said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said there are not many cards to open. There are not many numbers to play with when it comes to openness, you know? Yeah. So there's only one number. World record, or you go home. <laughs> no, hold on. Let me let me ask that. Would you actually be opening with a world record bench press? Can I can I ask you to repeat, please? Would you op Would she open with a world record bench press at Sheffield? Posso rispondere io? Um, she would. Everything above. The world record is a world record. So she would. Amen. Amen. I love it. I, I, you know what? I think this is, this is the best podcast we've ever done. <laughs> I think <laughs> the, first, the first guest. I mean, um, again, um, Frances Francesco, would you be handling Carola at Sheffield yourself or someone else? Uh, her coach and me. So that's why you've been really political. I understand now. <laughs> <laughs> I understand, my friend. So, um, I mean, the, my next question is, of course, Sheffield is bigger than any other powerlifting meet I've witnessed or I've seen, right? A good question so, also to ask before, Jiren, why are you asking? I well, know Corolla has competed at World Games, and yeah. obviously we have Sheffield coming up. Which competition does she rank Sheffield as the highest level of competition or has she experienced World Games and does she think World Games is the true top level? Uh, credo che sono proprio due competizioni molto molto diverse uh, a livello di, um, di quello che io ritengo uh, sia maggiore in realtà non credo che posso dire l'una o l'altra, sicuramente nel powerlifting eh, classic Sheffield è la competizione maggiore, maggiore che esiste nel, eh, nel powerlifting attrezzato, invece sono i war games, però sono proprio due, a Sheffield ancora non l'ho vissuta, però per quello che mi immagino sono due competizioni molto 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 diverse, eh, sia per, per, lo, per lo svolgimento della gara e sia per... Eh, per tutto quello che ci gira intorno, diciamo, i World Games sono uh, un po' un'esperienza a parte eh, anche dal resto delle gare, perché è un, una competizione che prende più sport, eh, è proprio una cosa diversa. E Sheffield è sicuramente la, la competizione più alta in questo momento, sì. Um, what she said uh, is that Sheffield and the World Games are really different competitions, uh, given the fact that she has not competed at Sheffield uh, yet. Uh, so she cannot really tell the difference uh -huh. between the two, but the World Games is, you know, like the, 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 the pinnacle of uh, equipped lifting and Sheffield is most likely and for sure the pinnacle of classic lifting. Uh, che altro avevi detto poi? È che Sheffield è sicuramente la gara più importante su sul panorama che c'è adesso. Uh, overall, for sure, Sheffield is the, the 
most uh, like the, the most important competition uh, overall I in mean, my opinion in my opinion the, the difference between the two is that you know Sheffield is a huge event mm -hmm. what you feel when you go at the world games is that uh, there's something like the o Olympic uh, Olympic field. Field. Like, yeah so Advent village and other nations and all of that stuff i mean um sorry i was just going in on open ipf here while right, with carola's uh, record there's three times this woman has come second three times in her career right i told you once as role she was injured at the arnold Imagine coming second, being injured. That's ridiculous, you know. Yeah, she was injured at the Arnold when she came second. Realistically, in role powerlifting, Carola has never lost. Touch wood. Mate, my question is, as an athlete, Carola, when you think that you've never lost in role, how do you feel? Because I don't know how you feel because I bombed out before. How does he feel? Knowing I've never lost, literally Mayweather, Flory Mayweather. Sì, effettivamente, vabbè, all'Arnold sì, ho fatto seconda e anche se comunque un po' me l'aspettavo che quella gara sarebbe andata così, visti tutti insomma i precedenti. E diciamo che sicuramente arrivare seconda nelle competizioni attrezzate mi ha fatto bene. E anche se, se appunto non, non, non sono mai arrivata a seconda nelle competizioni RO. Eh, io non, diciamo che tendo mh, a non viverla mai come eh, se, se, se non potessi perdere, cioè so che c'è questa possibilità, eh, che, che chiaramente questa volta la gara è molto più difficile rispetto alle altre gare che ho fatto, eh, però eh, ecco non vado mai a una gara cioè dando per scontato che, che vincerò she said that um, having the opportunity uh, to be second in equipped uh, quante volte? due volte? Mm. twice she, she learned how to be to lose basically and she tries to never feel like it's like come avevi detto di andare sapendo di vincere so you you never go there she never goes there uh with the only goal of winning and no other possibility but just to uh to stay a little bit more calm and focused so she learned from equipped, from losing in equipped, how to be a bit more relaxed and focused. Jesus. Well, so basically, uh, if I can translate that to our listeners, Carola's learned from equipped for coming second. She told herself, I will never gonna lose in role. And then she's done that over the years. It's just ridiculous. Because again, well, I mean, I've never seen anybody record, record here with these many ones. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous, you know. Um, I've got, I've I, do, got I do think, though, yeah. on that before the question, I think as an equipped lifter, you have to deal with a lot more mental stress than a raw lifter. Like, you know, just hitting depth as an example. Tony is an example. Like, he's bombed out on equipped and he's just like, yeah, it's another equipped. That stress in my head would kill me off. But as an equipped lifter, because you have to deal with it all the time, I think it makes lifting raw an easier mental experience for them. I couldn't do equipped either. Like having that much weight on my back, having 175 on the bench is like a 63 kg female. It's just ridiculous. Like I think that it leads over really nicely, doesn't it, to the raw lifting? Mentally, anyway. Eh, dice il fatto che comunque l'attrezzata è molto sì. più mm -hmm. stressante mentalmente lui ha detto per esempio non riuscirei mm -hmm. non hai capito quel sì. pezzo là mm -hmm. dice secondo te sta roba ti ha portato anche a avere qualche diciamo, vantaggio mm -hmm. nel sì, eh, nelle prime gare attrezzate soprattutto internazionali ero praticamente terrorizzata avevo paura <ride> che poteva succedere veramente di tutto anche che mi cadesse il bilanciere di dosso mentre 
eh, facevo la rec di squat quindi diciamo che le paure erano talmente tante che ti scordavi degli avversari cioè avevi semplicemente paura di quello che dovevi fare tu e non più degli avversari eh, nel, nel powerlifting classic questa cosa non esiste quindi la principale paura che hai è, è chiaramente dei numeri dei numeri che potrai fare e magari di non fare bene cioè io ho questa paura qua cioè ho paura che non attrezzato no nel rosso di ah, di non riuscire a fare tutto quello che posso e quindi sicuramente la, la pressione nelle gare attrezzate è, 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 è più alta è più alta perché comunque appunto l'imprevedibilità è tantissima quindi prima di pensare ai numeri o agli avversari devi pensare a rimanere in gara She said that at the beginning when she started uh, competing abroad um, in equipped lifting, she was terrified. She she was like, uh, I fear I can drop the bar while, while walking out in the squad or something. So you're just more focused on not bombing out than on your opponents, to be honest. And in classic lifting, uh, instead she is a bit more concerned about uh, doing well what she has to do and hitting that numbers she wants to hit that day. So it's a different concern. Mm. Wow. So basically classic lifting is a, a mental vacation for Carola. Let me stay. <laughs> 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 I, I had a quick question. So Francesca and Carola, just behind you, there is a, set of medals <laughs> and i thought i thought it was a wig eyes, bro jesus Christ. i thought i thought it was a wig and then i realized it must be a golden wig <laughs> now that's that's national medals that's wow. national <laughs> and all of that is just gold medals right yeah <laughs> my friend bro. none of oh us here face. can relate <laughs> None of us here knows how that feels. No, no one here knows how that feels. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> oh, Lord. We, we, oh. We, do, we do a lot of competition uh, in Italy, so. <laughs> right, that's a lot. Um, again, um, Carola, my, my next question is, you've done World Games and... You going up against an athlete that have that similar experience in Agatha. She's done World Games, she's won. You've done World Games, you've won. Does this make the competition a little bit different for you? Because you've competed, as um, Francesco said there, uh, you, said, uh, you said yourself, equipped lifting is mentally draining because you're thinking about not dropping the weight. And then again, what Indy said, just putting the equipped there is exhausting. So when you compete against other raw lifters, it's different. But now you're going up with someone that has a similar experience with you. Does this make it special? Forget about Sheffield. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. does this make it special? Because you're going up against a lifter that has lived almost the similar life as yourself. Mm -hmm. eh, secondo te è diverso il fatto che comunque ti scontri a prescindere dalla gara che vai a fare che ti scontri con un atleta che c'è comunque un bagaglio simile al tuo sì. Eh, sì sicuramente anche lei avrà avrà diciamo degli avrà imparato eh, avrà, ha un bagaglio diciamo maggiore da questo punto di vista quindi sicuramente ha dalla sua parte questa cosa eh, di aver mh, fatto competizioni anche attrezzate e si, credo che anche lei insomma eh, sia abbastanza cosciente del fatto che, che le gare attrezzate eh, da quel punto di vista lì sono un po' più impegnative quindi eh, credo che questa cosa mh, dia in un qualche modo anche a lei una, una sorta di, così, di sicurezza in più, non lo so. Come se fosse un vantaggio. Sì, sì. Uh, she said that for sure. She thinks that uh, Agatha knows uh, what's it like to compete in equipped and um, most probably that's an advantage mm -hmm. for her. She means for her that's an advantage. 
Yeah, I like okay. Francesco. Uh, I like Francesco because I'm reading in between the lines. <laughs> you can't beat the Italians politicians, bro. Come on. <laughs> Look how they, they colonized the, the entire Europe. Do you know what I mean? No, no, seriously. <laughs> you know, I mean, again, right? I, I, it's so, it, it's incredible. I mean, to us as uh, spectators, is a privilege to watch such a great talent on that platform on, on yourself um leo and agatha we know it's going to be an amazing comp in terms of that but um, my question is how does it feel to have a world game medal and i'm sure if i ask you what is the most prestige medal you have at home you probably tell me it's a world games how does it feel okay. no. Dice c'è una medaglia dei World Games, e dice come, come ci si sente ad avere una medaglia dei World Games, una medaglia d'oro, eh, perché dice sicuramente se ti chiedo qual è la medaglia più sì, importante sì. che hai, tu sicuramente mi rispondi quella, mm -hmm. quindi ti chiede com'è. Mm. Eh, in realtà sì, probabilmente è la medaglia che ha il valore maggiore, e... anche se secondo me... Eh... E alla pari, di, alla pari dei mondiali RO, perché comunque finora le, competiz le competizioni RO sono state, i mondiali sono state le competizioni più, più importanti che si potessero fare. Quindi io in realtà do molto valore ai mondiali. E, sicuramente eh, avere delle mondiali, de delle medaglie d'oro eh, a casa. Eh, ti dà quella, quella sicurezza anche nei momenti, un po', un po' ti dà quella sicurezza anche nei momenti in cui tende a credere meno in te stesso, cioè ti ricordi che comunque quelle cose le hai fatte tu, non te le hanno regalate, e che, e che come l'hai fatto quella volta lo puoi rifare, che comunque eh, stai facendo il tuo percorso in questo sport e che la cosa più bella secondo me è è continuare a farlo, cioè non è vincere una sola medaglia, ma provare a, a lasciare in un qualche modo il segno. She said that for sure the, the World Games medal is one of the most prestigious she has, but she also said that uh, for her the, the, the classic worlds is as much prestigious. And uh, she also said that having a lot of Uh, international gold at home uh, is um, a bit is useful when you don't have that much self-confidence or you're just a little bit down because you can you can tell yourself uh, i i did that and i can do it again and i have to do that again because that's the that's the path somehow I mean, I mean, of course, uh, none of us, us three here, we can't relate in terms of saying more international medal. We can't relate. One person, <laughs> and lift, the other one drop the deadlift at Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can't relate. So moving on to that, that, that again, I mean, one of the things that um, my question I was going on about when I, um, I asked you to come to this podcast, Carola, is the story with Leah. Leo and Carola has been almost like you've been pushing each other, right? Since Leo came to the scene, you barge in as well. It's been Carola or Leo, and it's like Messi and Ronaldo, let's just say, right? Messi and Ronaldo. If you ask anybody who is the better player, the other people tell you Messi, the other people say Ronaldo. It's exactly the same thing, the, 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 the example here. How do you feel having Leo as your main arch rival, but at the same time, She looks at you thinking, oh, Carola is just incredible. I just want to be like Carola. So is it, the, is it the same feelings with you? Or is it you have that Italian hardcore mentality where I want to crush anybody that comes to my way? Deve fare spiegare l'ultimo pezzo. Dice, hai capito tutta la... Sì, mi si respinge a vicenda, ok? E dice, come, come ti senti tu? Perché dice, lei alla fine, ha ah, mi si è fatta una citazione, ha detto alla fine ha detto che vorrebbe essere come te un pochino, no? Mm. E lui dice, tu invece che ne pensi? Eh, pure tu la pensi un po' così, oppure hai la mentalità italiana di spacco tutti? Mm -hmm. Um, io sicuramente sono grata di, di aver avuto un'avversaria eh, che stesse al, 
al mio stesso livello, una volta più l'una, una volta più l'altra, eh, perché comunque credo che sia il miglior modo per eh, continuare a, a migliorare e anche per superare un po' quelle barriere mentali che a volte ti fai involontariamente, quindi eh, sapere che c'è qualcun altro che fa quella cosa e dici ah, ma io pure la voglio fare, perché, perché lei sì e io no, quindi diciamo che questa è, è secondo me, cioè io sono contenta di aver avuto, una, di aver avuto fino adesso un'avversaria un come Lia, E credo che abbiamo delle caratteristiche diverse eh, come atlete, come, come persone, non, non lo so fino in fondo perché comunque non la conosco abbastanza bene, eh, però no, cioè non dico ok voglio andare lì e, e, battere, e battere tutti a prescindere, eh, so, sono contenta diciamo tutto sommato di aver avuto lei come avversaria. She said she's grateful and happy to have that kind of opponent, mm -hmm. worthy opponent, because she said, like, uh, when you when you see something like that or someone like like that, uh, you can tell, like, OK, I want to do that. <laughs> I want to do that. Uh, so she's happy. Maybe she said maybe uh, there are differences. not as a person as she she doesn't know her but uh, as athletes for sure but she's happy she's grateful i mean again that's that's thing because some people almost feed off each other you know what i mean when you see someone being so good in your weight class of course you almost like i'm not saying you work harder because it's good but she's feeding off you in terms of like training and you feeling of her uh, heart as well. I mean, I've, I had Leah here, right, um, a couple of weeks ago. I asked Leah the exact same question and she said the exact same thing where she said she believes Carola will always going to be her main competitors, no matter what. You know, even if Agatha is dropping down for the 69, some guys will come in, but Carola is just the main one. It's almost like she's focused on Carola rather than everybody else. To me, that alone is a privilege, is an honor for someone like Leo or someone like yourself to say, okay, that's a privilege to have Leo in my work class. And she said the same thing. It's incredible. I hope you two break world records. All right. And yeah, then. I want to say for, for like the football fans, I feel like this is like a Maldini versus Zidane kind of match. <laughs> 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 Both legends in their own right okay. finally coming out to okay. it. <laughs> that, that that's a good one there so again um carola sheffield is a record-breaking competition to me i don't count sheffield as a competition i count sheffield as a show it's a show to break world record you've spoken about potentially breaking the squat no by a little bit by a lot all right and we're not going to talk about the number the squat record is 211 by leo you're thinking about breaking that by a lot And Leia came to the podcast, said the exact same thing you said there. You know, that's why you two are so good at each other, competing against each other. She said, I'm hoping to break the world record score, not by a little, but a lot. And she didn't talk about bench because Leia can't talk about bench. And <laughs> you spoke about it. It's like she can talk about deadlift, but you can't talk about deadlift. But she spoke about deadlift. So now to me, my question to you is, what message are you sending other women? It's not just Leah and Agatha here, because you three can go to war and lose against other women. It can happen, right? You go out against each other, you kill each other, and someone like Natalie or Evie wins, and both of you, three of you end up seven, eight, and nine. <laughs> the odds of that are very low. But the women <laughs> are so stacked oh. that seven, eight, nine is insane. <laughs> <laughs> so what message are you sending to the rest of the women that are going to Sheffield. Not just Leah and Agatha, everybody else. You can be honest. <laughs> eh, sicuramente quest'anno la 69 è una delle categorie più 
forse avvantaggiate con il fatto che il record non è, non è stato rialzato così tanto recentemente come è successo per esempio in, nella 52 o, o nella 76 eh, quindi lo so che, che ci possono essere altre avversarie che, che, che vinceranno e che non sarà magari una 69 eh, sicuramente eh, dovranno fare un tot di chili in più del record perché credo che eh, avere tre persone in 69 che provano a fare quel record eh, ci spingerà ad alzarlo di un po'. <ride> Um, adding a little bit of drama, uh, she said something like uh, she knows someone else can be obviously dangerous, but that will have to do a lot. Okay. Francesco, don't be a He politician. gave us a PR version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> We're going to have to upload this video, right, to like some sort of translator so that we get Oh. the unedited version. <laughs> I just I just messaged message my Italian buddy here. As soon as I finish, I'll send him the recording. Are you Send messaging me the Edo? Are you, are you speaking to Edo? Literally, to send me a transcript of Carola because I think Francesca has been too political here. Right? Uh, she hasn't said anything more. He tries to uh, put uh, a little bit... Uh... Uh, drama more. Oh, so he helped us. Oh, no, 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 no. I think I was removing it because Carola said like 10 sentences, but Francesco is saying two words or three words. <laughs> The only two words you want to hear. No, fair enough. But again, Rob, fair enough. It, it is incredible in terms of like, of course, you're not going up against yourself, you're going against the rest of the women, right? I have a question leading to just on the women's side in terms of powerlifting, because Carola, you've been in the game for uh, not a very long time, about longer than a few people on that platform in Sheffield. So how do you see powerlifting from where you started and where powerlifting is now, especially on the women's side? How do you see it? Come è cambiato, come... Specialmente a femminile, come è cambiato Beh, da quando hai cominciato se, se a farci. ripenso a, al 2015 probabilmente non era neanche immaginabile tutto questo, cioè non avrei proprio neanche mai pensato che in così pochi anni, perché alla fine sono pochi anni, sono nove anni, eh, che la cosa potesse diventare così tanto più grande eh, nella prima gara che ho fatto nel 2015 eravamo... forse 10, in tutta la 63, eh, junior, junior, senior, master, tutti. Adesso servono tre giorni di gare praticamente per, per fare le gare soltanto femminili. Quindi la cosa è assolutamente incredibile e era inimmaginabile. Eh, quindi sono sicuramente molto contenta di come, di come si è evoluta e mi fa estremamente piacere vedere lo sport che, che amo eh, crescere così tanto e sicuramente Sheffield in questo aiuta tantissimo eh, ho sentito tantissime persone eh, In questa, durante questi mesi eh, venire a Sheffield soltanto perché appunto è, è uno show incredibile She said that at the beginning, in uh, 2015, you basically couldn't tell anything like that. She's very happy to see her like below of the sport grow that much. And uh, what have you said? Eh, che, che sicuramente avere eh, eh, Sheffield SBD che aiuta tanto in questo sport perché proprio la, cioè la gente lo vive proprio come se fosse una, uno spettacolo che, che appassiona le persone For sure, SPD and Sheffield is something amazing for this sport and does incredible things. And we, she heard, we heard a lot of people, even from here, friends uh, and relatives coming to, uh, to Sheffield. And people are happy, like, when you go uh, at a, a football match or, or something like that. So things are changing. Uh, for instance, when she started out in 2015, there was like 10 people in the classic division in the 63 kilo class. This year, we've had like three days of 93s and three days of 63s. In Italy? Yeah, 93, 93.
my god yeah, that's crazy. That is, and all of that you should take credit for that because you are the italian legend right <laughs> so to me i like again right i think this is another question like they have you actually realized the impact you have had in the Italian lifting? Because I have got Edo in my weight class, which is an 83. And of course I had Emilio in the past for now, the man just disappeared. I don't know where he's gone. If he's been kidnapped by Alexander the Great, I don't know. But no, no, no. My, my question is like, even when I talk to Emilio or even when I talk to Edo, they speak about your impact in the Italian powerlifting, but yourself, how do you feel when other people around your country see you as that legend, that someone that paved the way for everybody else? Probabilmente non, non, non mi rendo tanto conto uh, di quello, cioè del, del, del percorso che, che, che la gente un po' fa anche grazie a questo sport, anche grazie ai risultati che ho ottenuto io. E poi quando, quando le persone magari me lo scrivono che hanno cominciato perché mi hanno visto, che comunque sono un po' ispirate dal percorso, mh, un, po', un po' lo realizzo. E... Quindi credo sì che, che nel piccolo anche io ho avuto la mia, il mio ruolo nel far crescere il, il powerlifting in Italia e con me anche tutti gli altri ragazzi che, che negli anni si sono mossi, si, si sono mossi molto bene e sono sicuramente contenta, soprattutto spero di dare eh, un buon esempio oltre che a far appassionare le persone a questo sport, spero anche di farla appassionare nel, nel, nel modo più... più corretto possibile e nel modo più pulito possibile. Um, so she said that basically you often don't realize how much impact you have uh, until you don't have someone uh, writing you in the DM or on, on the chat to tell you you have been like my uh, my mentor in, in this sport or my the thing I, I look up to uh, doing this. And uh, she said that she's happy. That's a privilege to be there. And she also said that there have been other really good athletes and good people, good guys doing great things for, for powerlifting here in Italy. Mm. And um, what she said at the end is that she hopes to be a good clean example of uh, going really, really high in powerlifting. I mean, talking about cleanliness, you've never failed a blood test like some people, so you're already clean. <laughs> <laughs> you're good there. Um, again, like my last few questions, um, I, I, I know I'm, I'm this bandwagon of um, your greatness is because I've watched you and equipped and, I've and now I'm witnessing you, witnessing you literally face to face life. So what is the first thing you would do when you get to Sheffield? Because before you answer that, one thing, this man called Majid Suleiman. Here we go. I know what's coming. <laughs> offered him a Range Rover to take him from the station to the hotel. He decided to walk. Right? Please come. They're amazing. They're amazing mountains in Italy, aren't they? So I feel like. <laughs> my question, first, before I go to my question, if they offer you a Range Rover, please, Francesco, take it. Yeah, but remember, remember, Mo, yeah, it's beautiful good. walking around Italy, right? Walking yeah. around the we UK is not the, it's not the same, okay? The big, big yeah. difference between walking in Italy and walking rainy. in the UK. Exactly. Oh, it's going to be so rainy. It's gonna <laughs> if they put so off that Range Rover, please take it. Okay, okay. So, now the question to Carola, what is the first thing she will be doing when she gets to Sheffield? Prima cosa che farò, mm -hmm. ma che ha detto tutto prima? Prima ha detto, vabbè, raccontava un aneddoto de, del ragazzo, quello che fa un botto di stacco, e dice che è andato a piedi. Ah. Quindi lui mi ha detto poi se te offrono una macchina, ha detto una macchina specifica, una Range Rover, prendila. Ok. okay. <ride> e comunque, ti adesso ti ha chiesto quale sarà la prima cosa che farei quando arriverai a Sheffield. Uh, 
non lo so, ho, ho questa immagine dell'anno scorso di quando i ragazzi arrivavano a Sheffield in cui mettevano le foto del, della stazione, del, del leggere il cartello Sheffield e, ed è una cosa che probabilmente io eh, involontariamente e volontariamente aspetto da tantissimo da quel 2020 quando che poi non si è fatto quindi probabilmente eh, eh, sarà diciamo un po' a realizzare finalmente di, di esserci eh, in quel posto anche semplicemente per, per, per il nome che poi eh, ad oggi è, è è quello che un po' rappresenta anche la competizione, quindi proprio realizzare di essere lì, in quel posto che, che aspetto da tantissimi anni. Uh, she said she remembers uh, all the guys last year um, posting uh, like pictures of the Sheffield signs and, and stuff. So she said that probably the first thing she will do is like enjoying and living the moment she has been waiting for a really long time and she has been uh, desiring for a really long time. That's, that, I mean, again, right? It's, first of all, Sheffield is not the best city in the UK. Don't, don't say, don't talk about London again. Shut so, up, Jurens. All you need to do, Carola, come, stay in London. Oh, here we go. Sheffield, not staying in London. Compete in Sheffield. When you finish competing the same day, you don't need to take pictures because you're already great. Come back to London and enjoy your time. Right? Don't, do not stay in no, London, don't, please. Don't there's go to London. Edinburgh, there's bar. Are you, are you planning on traveling around the uk you know let's 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 take it you you've won sheffield everything's done dusted are you gonna enjoy the uk for a little bit or is it back to back to italy and back to prepping for worlds eh, purtroppo no perché non, non potevamo per motivi lavorativi stare fuori eh, altri giorni oltre a quelli che, oltre a quelli che già staremo eh, in realtà inizialmente volevamo fermarci a Londra ma essendo poi una città molto grande da vedere abbiamo pensato che uno o due giorni non erano poi così diciamo non erano sufficienti per, per, per vedere quasi nulla ed essendo comunque in realtà molto vicino a noi probabilmente ci, ci torneremo con più calma Unfortunately not we have to we have to go back to Italy. We wanted to stay a couple of days, but uh, we wanted to go to London, but it's a really big city. So we thought like in two days, you, what can you do? Uh, nothing, nothing incredible. Edinburgh. And we want to be... <laughs> Edinburgh. Edinburgh. I mean, you I, can cover Edinburgh in a day. And I, it's I, I, as, as Indy said, uh, if you come to Sheffield, you win, you collect your check. Why stay in London? Go back to the, enjoy it. Come in. <laughs> to be fair, to be um, fair, everyone in the UK goes to Italy for holiday. So I literally, it, it's where I go all the time, right? So there's no point actually staying here in in, in like February, March weather in the UK. It's the world is not even good it's here. In March, you know, the food shit, the weather We're shit. You might as well go back to Italy all. and have have a good time. Um, so, Carola, I'll ask this question not as a an ignorant guy, but I'm just gonna ask it out there. Do you eat a lot of pasta? <laughs> what the hell's wrong yeah. with you, man? <laughs> a lot. Every no. day. <laughs> so that means more indie, more pasta into your diet, you bet. I, I, who are you talking to? Do you know I how much pasta, I eat? To be honest with you. 90% <laughs> of my meals are based around a Mediterranean Italian diet. I love that shit. It's oh, you yeah, you that serve, struggle you serve to eat. There, um, yeah, actually. Man, uh, I had a quick question though because we've just mentioned about the secret maybe might be pasta maybe not you know you Francesco you've got an amazing bench 281 equipped Carola you've got an amazing bench 175 equipped what is the secret you know what is <laughs> what is the secret for a good bench <laughs> <laughs> I have no secret that's not an amazing bench. Italian weather. That one is an amazing bench. <laughs> is it the frequency? Is it the technique? What What do you mostly focus on okay. in training? Sicuramente avere delle una predisposizione, quindi avere delle delle leve a favore e poi sì, che sicuramente nella nostra squadra siamo. Tutti abbastanza bravi nella banca eh, perché abbiamo, una, secondo me, una buona, una buona scuola. 
she said, obviously, good leverages are really important. Uh, but she also said in, that in our team, uh, we love bench press since always. And we are pretty good at bench pressing and teaching bench press. And like we have a good maybe system of thinking the technique of bench press. Okay. Thank you. I will send an email to my mom and dad. Sending my complaints. <laughs> complain about your genetics. <laughs> oh, <Amy, stop>. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will move to Italy for a month. <laughs> um, right. I, mean, I got I got a question. Sorry, it's based off the end of Sheffield. After Sheffield, obviously you're gonna be starting to prep for worlds. What's the plan? Are you staying 69, 63? Go up to the seventies. Are you gonna be like Thanos, just <laughs> collecting infinity stones? What, what, <laughs> what's the plan? <laughs> I hit the nail on the head I, here. I, I said no, fifty-seven. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, probably I will stay in sixty-nine. Nice. Wow. Okay. Wow. You know, are you, are you committed then to this weight cut? You you've built into it, and you're happy. Ha chiesto insomma dei cesenti come stai a 69, mm. just... Mi manca in realtà un po' la 63, è sempre stata la mia categoria di peso, quindi anche soltanto per essere affezionata a quella categoria un po' mi manca. Eh, vedere il corpo cambiare non è sempre facile, però sicuramente sto meglio, di, sto meglio rispetto all'ultimo anno in cui è stata veramente dura sostenere la 63. Actually missing the 63 plus, but she said that um, seeing your body changing is not always easy, uh, but the 63 was really, really hard to keep. Imagine how much cannoli you can eat now being a 69. <laughs> Honestly, I just, I, cutting, no, it's just, especially if I was live, if I was in Italy, I'd be a 120 plus. <laughs> in Italy, si mangia davvero troppo bene per poter stare a dieta una vita. <laughs> it's really hard to diet uh, a lifetime if you live here. Yeah, yeah. no, I bet. I can, I feel that. Uh, a, a quick question to hop into Indies, right? We have obviously IPF Worlds, which gives you the route for classic world games. And then we also have equipped worlds, which gives you the route for equipped world games, and both will be happening. Will Carla be looking to do a two times world champion within a year? Is that something she might consider or is she only focused on classic or will she consider the raw for world games? Yes, I voglio entrambi, giusto? Sì, le ha menzionati, ha menzionato due cose che hanno lo stesso nome, però immagino intendesse quello. Okay. Quindi... Um, non so se si potrà... Eh, chiede quale vuoi fare dei due. Ok, non so se si, può, se si potranno fare tutti e due, è una cosa che ancora non ho, mm, non ho capito. Eh, se è possibile, io vorrei fare entrambi in realtà. Eh, se non è possibile, per motivi di, di regole o per motivi di calendario, eh, darò priorità ai, ai World Games Classic. She said that if possible, she would like to do both. But if it's not possible, she will have to prioritize like the classic event. I mean that that that's incredible. That, boys, have you got any other question? No, thank you very much for giving us your presence. Honestly, it's amazing. It's been an amazing experience. Um, I feel like my bench has increased by five kilos just after this conversation. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold you to that. I'll hold you to that. Obviously, yeah. I joined a little bit late. Did you cover who Corolla thinks is up there to win men and women? Oh, we didn't actually. You can ask that question. Go for it. Corolla, I mean, who do, in your opinion, you can um, say, it's not an ego thing. You can say me. And we'd we'd expect it, but who Francesca do you think might give us a PR winning? version of this? Also, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> who do you think's gonna in your head be on the podium, men and women at Sheffield this year? I give you Come chi? Come sarà il podio? Secondo te come sarà il podio uomini e donne a Sheffield? Uh... Allora, eh, molto difficile da dire. Eh, nelle donne. Eh... Probabilmente sì, credo che ci sarà una delle, delle, delle 69. Eh, credo che ha un'ottima possibilità ancora una volta eh, una 52. 
e quindi o Ivi o Noemi e, e probabilmente anche eh, Sonita o, o Britney eh, potrebbero avere una buona chance nelle donne solo una per categoria Eh, sul podio sì, cioè nel senso chi probabilmente, cioè queste sono le, le categorie secondo me più che più possono ambire al podio, no? non una per ok categoria, però sono ok le ok categorie più. Eh, negli uomini eh, non, non lo so bene perché li sto seguendo un po' meno onestamente, eh, probabilmente eh, Jesus, credo che... avrà di nuovo delle ottime possibilità e probabilmente uno dei 93 <ride> e non lo so la 74 Scalde. sì pe pensavo onestamente di sì poi il record si è alzato molto con uh, Bacchelund quindi non lo so So she said, uh, she mentioned in the female, uh, the 84 plus, the 52 and the 69. I know the So possible. basically, basically what Carola said, I'm winning. Um, <laughs> is coming second and Sonita is coming third. So, Sonita, <laughs> Brittany, yeah. uh, which is, uh, I mean, it's fine. I mean, you're a tremendous lifter. I, I can't contest that. I cannot contest that. Um, um, so on the What men's about the side, side, what about the yeah. men's yeah. side? Uh, the male, um, mm, she said uh, that she actually doesn't really well know that, but she thinks that Jesus has a good chance this year and maybe one of the 93s. So basically, she said Jesus, Kaiko, and the third one will be one of the 74, could be Avakali or Tim. If potentially, if. Um, um, She said that probably the world record was uh, uh, raised. A lot yeah. in yeah. yeah. It will affect them. But so, yeah. I mean, again, that's incredible. And those are good picks, though. Those are very good picks, though. Um, and I'm actually, I'm glad you actually mentioned some names because quite a lot of people have, you know, they're like, mm, I don't know. I don't want to say names. Um, it's nice to actually hear some names for once. Um, but yeah. That's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah we can't wait um francesco i can't wait to meet you um first to first can't wait to see carola again um at sheffield i wish you luck for the rest of the um training and mm -hmm. hopefully you bent that 165 that you're looking for so fingers crossed be more than me <laughs> okay well, thank you thank you for thank that. you <laughs> <laughs> you know so um for all our listeners guys if you have a question to carola she does actually write english by the way guys. i have one question on, yes. i have one question for inde okay. okay could you please tell my friend alfredo orsini he he can deadlift 400 kilos <laughs> <laughs> message me on instagram and i'll do it yeah 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 okay okay <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for um cool so again as i was saying if you want to message uh, carola guys anyone who's listening drop carola a message she's really a friendly world-class athlete she's not like those world class that you see they don't reply to people there's a few of them here have won world championship you message them they just blank you the things that they queen the queen already died jesus christ anyway <laughs> on that note Thank you very much, guys. Give us likes and send us questions if you have any.